All right, in this math tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to practice finding the length of a hypotenuse and expressing that answer in simplest radical form. Now, to find the length of any hypotenuse of a right triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now, the way I like to do it, though, is I like to use the equation, the square root of a squared plus b squared is equal to c, which is really the same thing as the Pythagorean theorem. Because if I wanted to isolate the c here, taking the square root of something that is squared will actually cancel out that root, or I should say the radical symbol and the square. And what we do to one side, we do to the other side. So I actually like using this form a bit better. So let's go ahead and take a, which is two, and square it and add it to the second leg, which is six squared. And that is equal to C. And we have two squared, which is four, and six squared, which is 36. So this is really four plus 36, which is 40. So the square root of 40 is going to be equal to C. Now, if you take a look over here on the right side of our screen here, we have the first 10 perfect squares. Now, what we have to do is ask ourselves, do any of these perfect squares fit perfectly into 40? Now, one really doesn't count. We cannot break down a square root in simplest radical form using a one. Now, four is something that fits perfectly into 40. Nine does not, 16 does not, nor do any of these other perfect squares. So because four does fit perfectly into 40, what we could do is we could take 40 and break it into the factors four and 10. So whenever you are breaking something down into simplest radical form, just take that number and break it into two factors and one of them has to be a perfect square. Now what we do is we take the one that is a perfect square, in this case four, and write the square root of that on the outside of our radical. So we get rid of the four because the square root of four is two. And we write a two over here and we just make sure there are no perfect squares remaining in the number that we have under the radical sign, and there is not. So we would say that the hypotenuse of this triangle is two times the square root of 10 in simplest radical form. All right, let's go ahead and figure out the hypotenuse of this triangle. So once again, we are gonna take the square root of a squared plus b squared, and that is gonna be equal to c, so the two legs we have here are three and six. So we have to square three and we have to square six. And if we square three, that is nine. And if we square six, that is 36. And that is gonna be equal to C. So we have to find the square root of nine plus 36, which is 45 in simplest radical form. So let's figure out what perfect squares are a factor of 45. So four is not, but nine is, and we know that nine times five is 45. So let's go ahead and break 45 down into the square root of nine times five, which is equal to C. And nine is the perfect square, so we are going to take the square root of it and write the square root of nine on the outside of a radical, which is three. So we would say, the length of this hypotenuse is three times the square root of five in simplest radical form. All right, let's go ahead and knock out this last problem here. So once again, we take the square root of a squared plus b squared and set that equal to c. And we are going to square the two legs of this problem, which are four and eight. So we have to square four and we have to square eight, and that's going to be 16 plus 64. And if we add 16 and 64 together, that's gonna to end up giving us 80. So we have to break 80 down in the simplest radical form. So let's determine which of these perfect squares can fit into 80. Now four could fit into 80, that would be four times 20, but let's see if we can find something larger than that. Uh, nine can fit in, cannot fit into 80. Um, nine can fit into 81, but not 80. 
I almost misspoke there. Now, 16 is a perfect square. That is a factor of 80. As a matter of fact, 16 times 5 is equal to 80. So let's go ahead and take the square root of 16, which is our perfect square, and write that on the outside of our radical. That would be 4. So we would say that the length of this triangle's hypotenuse is 4 times the square root of 5. All right, now if you think you need a little bit more practice with simplest radical form, I have a really good tutorial on my channel that deals with that subject specifically. So go ahead and check it out if you need just a little bit more help. Hey, I just want to say thanks for checking out this math tutorial. Please don't forget to hit that subscription button and enable notifications so you can be informed as I upload new math tutorials to my math channel. Till next time, this is Shane Masonette with Masonette Math.